All right, welcome back, everybody, to BRTV. I ain't forgot about y'all. You know, I've been working uh, not just on bikes, but trying to sell a house here and uh, got a garage floor that I just did some epoxy to. So that took a weekend, and uh, it came out all right, I guess. Looks better than what it did before, but today's topic is taking the YD100 from the Phantom 85 and just breaking it down and doing everything I possibly can to it to get it. I mean, everything, everything, everything. I, I broke this sucker down, okay? So let's start off with this. There's a good video out there, and I'll put a link in the description. I know I'm bad about that, not putting links in the description. But I'm going to put a link in the description that's going to help you if you do desire breaking one of these down that it's not for a YD100, it's for like a triple 40 or something or a whatever motor, but it, it's a good tutorial. It's good visual on it and I'm going to put it down there. It's going to help you. Um, so on this YD100 bottom end, I had broke down, you know, there's that bevel gear. I think it's on one of these sides. Yeah, it's on this side right here. It's that small gear, and it's got that flathead look to it like that. So I had to get this on Amazon, and I had a ratchet, and I got it to turn like maybe that much, and I couldn't get it to turn anymore. They, they, they had it so tight, they had some kind of lock washer on there with teeth, and they had some badass glue. I'm telling you, it took about 60 pounds of force. I had to get... Let me show you the tool I used. This one right here to take off lug nuts. To take off lug nuts from a tire. I had to use this. Had I had uh, somebody hold the motor down on the bench. And then I got that pointing straight down. I had all my weight on it. That was the only way I could get that sucker off, man. I mean, I it was on freaking tight real tight okay and i used this it was a little too thick so i took my grinder so it would fit in there and now the screws messed up so i'm going to put a, a different kind of bolt with like a hex head that's how i'm going to do it i'm going to put that flathead bullshit on there anymore so there's a tip there for you everything else was real easy this is the motor that the uh, Phantom 85 blew up on. Y'all seen the video. The bearings. I mean, this thing had two and a half tanks in it. There ain't nothing wrong with it. These are just the covers. Okay. Those are just the covers. Here's one side of the, uh, of the bottom end. So what I'm going to do is. I got some. Polishing compound. So we know that that the fuel comes in through here, circles around, or does some kind of shit, and goes back up into the combustion chamber, right? This is all rough. I'm gonna take that polishing compound, smooth it down. I'm gonna take the head. I'm gonna take the head off the other, cause see, I got it on the other bike right now. So I'm gonna take the head, the jug, put it on there, and match up these lines. I'm gonna match them up, smooth them out, Kind of use my imagination, you know, if I was air, what would be the smoothest pathway around and back out? So smoothing these corners, not real dramatically, you know, you don't want to affect the thickness or the way it matches up, see? But there's definitely some work to do there. Like I said, I'm going to go all out. I got this thing apart. I'm going to do that. I guess that's called like port matching, right? Because those are the ports, or maybe, I don't know. Either way, it's pretty common sense, all right? So, we got that going on with the case, okay, on this side too. Last night, let me put the case aside here. We're done talking about that. Last night, I took the crank. And I put a half-inch hole the best I could in the center, 15 millimeters deep. Not too bad, huh? Not too bad. 
So I did a little crank balancing. Now this is the crank off the one that exploded. The bearings are good. It rolls really smooth, okay? It's real nice. It's drilled out, and what I used is a poor man's drill press. You can get them on Amazon. This was like $23 after tax. You put your you put your hand drill in there. And you use a lever and you just bring it down. See how it's got a spring? And it's even got this degree thing here, but I didn't really use that. And it comes in this thin box. See they got a picture of the drill in there like that. And I use like a because you got to have your hand. I had like my elbow on this and my hand pushing down that, keeping it straight inside there. And uh, I had a zip tie around the trigger. And I have the plug that's close. So whenever I want to, like, I just plug it in. And then when I'm done, just pull the plug. So, and I got it, I put it back in the boxes. Lord knows when I'm ever going to use this thing again. So yeah, 23 bucks drill press right there. Poor man's drill press, because you know a real drill press is like anywhere between four and seven hundred dollars. So there's your half inch hole. So we got the YD 100 crank balanced, okay? Like I said, I'm going all out. I'm gonna do everything I know I can do, other than changing the bearings. I'm gonna keep these bearings. I got a YD 100 with the same bearings. I am happy with those. You know, I'm I'm just not gonna yeah. This is, they last. So let them keep lasting. Same with this bearing. It's all the, all the bearings are just, they feel fine. They feel fine. And if any of y'all think that 40 to 1 isn't enough oil, dude, when I had this thing upside down, I mean, just black oil was just coming out of it. Like, almost like motor oil. Okay. So if you put anything more than 41, Man, I'm thinking you could probably do 50 to 1. <laughs> I mean, there's just, there's a lot of oil that stays down in this sucker. So these get stay, they stay lubricated really good. Now, I heard they're supposed to come with some kind of oil. Or, I mean, uh, uh, like bearing lube or something. I'm thinking you can probably squeeze a little bit in there if you wanted to. But don't, I mean, I would take like a toothbrush and bristle that shit in real and then wipe it off, you know, because that's only going to be temporary, because once you start getting fuel in there, it's going to stay lubricated, okay, no worries there on lubrication, no worries at all, all right, so we're coming up close to the end of the video here, I got this, is uh, the other gear that, that, that grinds with the bevel gear, let me get the bevel gear out and show you, boom, right, so you know that, right, Let's see, which way does it go? This way? Yeah. This was a little bastard right here, man. Golly. Anyways, so I took this, and on that video that I'm going to post, on that video I'm going to post in the description, the dude from Zeta talks about um, tightening this down a little bit. And he doesn't really say how, to, how much to tighten down, but I, I rewound, rewound it and saw that he just kind of like did like a, a half a turn he did like two quarter turns he said tighten down the spring you want to, you want to know it's a big difference other than that you'll have to use like if you want a better spring a modified spring but if you do this tighten down the spring it'll work really good so i went ahead and did that too what the hell so it's like almost a half a turn on there oh it's got a bearing bearing runs real good like i said this this bike only has two and a half tanks to it man it's still brand new so I'm going to reuse this bottom end, okay, and uh, so yeah, some other things that I, that I got, some gasket, I have some, I think on the case, what I'm going to do on the case is use this Permatex, because look here on the case, see how there's a lip, so, so this one is like, it sticks out. And that one's indented, so it has like its own little way of matching up perfectly. You just got to put a good amount of bead here. And then you let it set for about 15 minutes. 
and then you take the other piece and put it on there and just snug them down and let that sit for another 15 minutes. It's, it's like a rubber, this Permatech stuff. I know this to be really good. So I'm going to use that to seal that up because it is pretty hard to find the gas, the actual gasket for the YD100. I think I've seen one, but he was wanting a lot of freaking money for it. And that's probably why, because it's hard to find. So we got that going on next next weekend. So while I'm doing this video, I want y'all to stay tuned and watch it. I got this run lead. This is something I should have done when I first got into this hobby. Temperature. It's got a temperature and RPM um, readout. It's for like small engines, water pressures, stuff like that. Water pressure, little motors. It, it'll, it'll work on like two cylinder, three cylinder, four cylinder, five cylinder, six. Two-stroke, four-stroke, whatever. So we got that installing. Oh, another cool thing. You probably noticed this head right here, right? I went and bought new bolts. I was tired of that shit bolt. That's another upgrade I'm going to do to this. These bolts are M8, which is 8 millimeter by 1.25 m8 by 1.25 m8 by 1.25 will match the mounting bolts that goes to your frame and the head bolts look at that it just goes in there nice and smooth these are stainless hard steel like i said i got them on amazon too and you can just tell by looking at them they look like quality Man, I'm just tired of this, the bullshit quality of bolts that they put on this shit, man. It's just, ugh. You bolt down the bolts to the frame once and you undo it. And you can already see where the bolts that they give you are already starting to strip. And you're like, really? You know? So. And you, you can tell they got heads on them, man. I'm just going to take my cutoff tool and cut to the desired length. What is the length of these? I don't know. They're about, I think these are four and a half inches long, and that's enough to where I can cut them off. Yeah, about four and a half inches long. So I got that going on. New mounting hardware that there. I even got. I went out and bought one of these things here because you're supposed to torque the the head bolts to eight foot pounds. I don't know how accurate this thing is, but man, these things are just so old school. I thought it was cool to have. Another cool thing was uh, that I got for the bike. It's already coming off. This guy right here. It's got double zippers. You know that opening that you see on your beach bike? Well, this is supposed to fit perfectly right in there. And, uh, I'll we'll give it a shot. What the hell? It's a cool place to to store some tools. So that's about it, man. What else did I get here? I got some some new acorn nuts. I like the acorn nuts. I like the way it looks. Okay, don't hate me. Oh, yeah. There's a new gasket for the YD. Check this out. You've heard of the CM10, CW10, right? by Wiseco Eclipse. Well, this wrist pin is a 12 millimeter. So I got some CW12s. I'm gonna redo that. Got all these for the porting and polishing. And I got some rubber ones coming in too, and that's what I'm gonna use to polish the exhaust with the polishing compound. So I'm gonna do, like I said, I'm gonna do everything I can as much as I know from studying all you guys out there on the internet, thank you for that that content. That stuff really helped out. I'm going to use information from all of y'all, every single one of y'all, and I hope you know that rebounds off me and y'all can see that. If y'all got any questions, hey man, what's going on with this or that? This little detail, because I know there's sometimes I watch videos, people talk about stuff, but they don't really. There's something that I'm, I'm looking for, but I can't find it. I just happen to find it from someone else. But 
if you got any questions about these pieces, you know, let me know. This wasn't wasn't hard to do. I didn't, like I said, I did it with this. So I started with like like a one eight bit. Small, you know. And like five bits later, it took five bits to get to this size. So I worked on it for a good hour, 15 minutes for both sides. But I got it, you know. But uh, yeah, y'all stay tuned next weekend. Like I said, I'm gonna do all this. I don't know if it's actually gonna be able to be rideable by then. But I know the weekend after, quite possibly, quite possibly. So, it's a work in progress. Like I, I just do it one Saturday a weekend, and then I'm a truck driver, so I'm on the road five days a week. And then I come home, see the family, eat, spend some time with them. And one day, you know, I'll be out here nine, ten hours. And do some work, so. It take me a little bit longer, you know. I only sit at the house for four or five days. I mean, I got vacation time, but I'm just not eating. So, this is going to be the Phantom 85, the new, revised, everything done to it, except for the bearings. Okay? And you guys are like, put those Italian bearings in there. I'm like, yeah, I could, but I think these are fine. I really do. I got these bearings in the Whitey. Another Whitey with over 500 miles on it. Yeah. Flawless. Freaking flawless. Inside here, you probably can't see it. But it's a needle bearing. Yeah, there you go. There you go. You can see it there. Really good needle poking out. That thing's really good. Yeah, so you got a bearing there. The bearing here. Here, here, so you got one, two, three, four bearings, four separate bearings within the entire case. And these came with shims, they had two shims on each side. The shim, I got my little bucket of parts here. The shims look like this. I had two on each side. And I got all my parts in there. So, pretty simple. Yeah, y'all stay tuned, man. I appreciate y'all watching the video, and I've seen a whole lot of comments and stuff on the breakdown. Some good comments, some bad comments, some informative comments. I like them all, man. Y'all keep on commenting. And, uh, because then y'all start talking amongst each other, and that's how you solve problems, right? So, with this, I'm gonna say, see y'all later. Hope y'all enjoying that warm weather. It's still freaking like. 25, 30 degrees here. <laughs> All right, y'all take it easy. Later.